There's a wonderful verse in Romans chapter 10, beginning in verse 12. It says, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is so true. I'm working with prisoners now, and, and you can see how rich these ones are who have put their trust in Christ. They don't have anything in this world, but they're rich towards God. It's wonderful to see from a, a moment in which they're desperately poor to the next moment when they're infinitely rich, as rich as God is. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us most things? No, all things. We're as rich as God is. He hasn't withheld a thing from us. Well, some many years ago, I was out in British Columbia, and I was in a little photocopy shop in Richmond. And I had my chart I was going to use at a youth conference, sitting on the counter. And there was a short woman came in, sallow-skinned. She was talking to the owner as if she knew him well. And at a certain point, she looked over and saw my chart. Is that yours? She said, yes. Um, what's it about? I said, well, these are the basic teachings of the Bible. She said, explain it to me. And so I began to go through the truth of the word. And she interrupted me by saying, well, do I have to become a religious Jew to go to heaven? I said, heaven? Have you been peeking? There's nothing in your scriptures about going to heaven. You're gathered to your father. That's the best hope you have. You know, the hope of heaven was made possible when Yeshua, the Messiah, opened heaven to us. He was the first man in heaven, and he unlocked the door for the rest of us. She said, well, like, do I have to become a religious Jew in, in order to make it? I said, well, you'll have to help me there because I don't know any religious Jews. She said, well, there are lots of them in Israel. I said, I've been to Israel quite a few times, but I've never met a religious Jew. She said, well, like the ultra-Orthodox. Yeah, I've met lots of ultra-Orthodox, but I haven't met a religious one. She said, what are you talking about? I said, well, you know what the... Jewish religion is, don't you? She said, what? I said, well, God is holy. We're sinners. But God loved sinners, and he wanted a relationship with us. And so he said to the Jewish people, build me a special room called the holiness of holinesses, and put a thick tapestry there blocking out anyone who would dare to come in there. You can get close, but not too close. And there was an altar, and a priest, and a sacrifice. And there was hope for sinners through the shedding of the blood of the sacrifice. Now, these religious Jews are talking about, do they have the holiness of holinesses? No. Do they have a priesthood? No. Do they have an altar? No. Do they have a sacrifice? No. I said, well, I guess I don't know any religious Jews then, do you? I said, all this stuff that they've invented, this isn't God's religion. This isn't the religion God gave the Jews. It's all make-believe. Now, I said, I don't suppose you'd be interested in knowing when the whole thing shut down, would you? She said, yes, I would. I said, well, maybe it was just a coincidence. But it happened at the exact moment when this rabbi from Nazareth, Jesus by name, was being crucified outside the capital city. And at a certain point, he lifted his voice and he shouted, it's finished. And at that very moment, that big tapestry was torn in two from the top to the bottom. Josephus says it was so thick that, thick as a man's hand, two yoke of oxen couldn't tear it apart. But at just about the time of the evening sacrifice, when the priests were getting the sacrifice ready for the altar, God said, 
I done with this? I said, you see, your scripture is full of signs pointing to something or someone. It's like you're driving down the road and you see a sign that says to the park and you say, okay, kids, here we are. And you pull over and lay the blanket down and have your picnic at the sign. You're not at the park yet. And I said, all of these prophecies and pictures in your scriptures are all pointing to someone and only one person could fulfill it. And that was Jesus. Well, we were there I'm sure an hour. The children kept running in from the car from daddy. And she said, you tell daddy this is important. I'm not leaving till I get my answers. And probably for an hour, we went through the scriptures. I pray that dear woman put her trust in the Lord Jesus. But what a glorious truth this is. There's no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Perhaps, maybe, will make it? No, no. Shall be saved. If you've never called on the Lord to save you, by a simple act of faith, say, Lord, here I am, the sinner that Jesus died for. Please save me now. And what does the Bible say? Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you.